Today we are going to create a tiny world. Hello my friends and let's get started. I'm sure you have seen these very cute pictures online of tiny worlds. I'm going to show you how to do that in Affinity Photo. The first thing you need of course is a true 360 panorama and you can do that yourself with your camera. If you have a modern model of camera it will probably stitch the picture inside of your camera into the panorama and if it doesn't you can still do that in Affinity Photo with the panorama um, tool. But when you have created that, which is our starting point for this tutorial, you are almost done. The next thing we are going to do is select the picture layer of our 360 panorama, go up here to document and click on resize document. Click on the little lock in the middle so we can set both sides to the same value. I will set it to 3000. There we go. Resize and it's squished into a square which is very helpful for us. The next thing we are going to do is click up here on arrange and click on rotate 90% clockwise, uh, 90 degrees sorry and do that again 90 degree clockwise so it's upside down. The next thing we need to do is click on filters, click on distort and then on rectangular to polar. Wait a little bit until the, fin uh, the filter is finished and there we have our tiny world. Outside here you can see a lot of stretchy pixels that we don't really need so we can zoom out and if your picture layer has a little lock up here just click on the lock to remove it and then we can rotate and zoom or resize the picture. Hold the control key and pull on one of the edges the control key will keep the picture centered so we can resize it so the world is pretty large and I will rotate it a little bit because we have this tower that is sticking out so we can stick that into an edge. Of course this is Trafalgar Square so this looks pretty good. Let's zoom into the picture again and that's pretty nice. You can see we have here a little bit of a problem in the middle because the legs of the people were a little bit too close to the bottom of the picture and we have this kind of void here where the space is bending inwards. It doesn't look very good. We will do something about that right now. So the first thing you want to do is to create two guidelines that are centered in the middle. They will glow green when they reach the middle or red when it's on the horizontal guideline. The next thing is a little workaround. We will create our ellipse tool or use our ellipse tool to create a circle in the middle. So hold the control and shift key and then click in the middle and pull outwards until you reach the edge of this kind of bendy area in the middle. There we go. And now we will hold the control key and click on the ellipse layer. So we'll create this selection and now we can delete this layer again and we are left with the selection and we will select our picture layer again with the tiny world and we will click up here on filters and then on distort again and then on pinch and punch and this will help us push the legs a little bit outward. Down here you can set the radius of the effect. This really depends on how the resolution of your picture is and Above that you can pinch and punch in both directions. You can see we can push the legs outward a little bit. Don't make the effect too big or it will cut off on the edge so that wouldn't look too good. Um, let's keep it like this probably. Okay we can deselect and you can see um, we have a nice effect here. Maybe it was a little bit too much. Let's go back again. I think we have created a little bit of a circle around it. So let's use pinch and punch again. Make the effect not quite as big. Let's see. Let's set the punch to 100% and then just move the effect outwards until it hits the border. Probably here is good. Like this. It's just a bit. Okay, good. So the legs are a bit further away from the center. Now we still have to fix this kind of middle area and to do that I prepared a texture from the internet. Let's load this right now. I will click on file and place and select the brick 
texture. I selected an endless brick pack, uh, texture. Way too big. This I will, by the way, I will um, link this in the description of the video. So you can download it too. Both of the pictures, of course, are linked so you can test them. And now what we have to do is put this in the center, rotate it so it's in the right position, aligning with the other bricks. Make it a little bit bigger like this maybe. And then again, we are going to use our filter distort pinch and punch tool to punch it a little bit outwards. Let's see. Not too much, just a little bit. And we can delete the rest that we don't need. So this looks kind of good. Okay. Not too bad. Not too shabby. Okay, so I will make the I will lower the opacity a little bit so I can see what's below. And now I am going to use our eraser brush to delete the rest that we don't need. So let's set it to a good size. Um, set the hardness pretty low, 15%, and reduce the opacity so we have several chances to get it right. Or maybe at the beginning we set it to 100%, make it a little bit bigger. That feels good. Okay, let's delete this. And we have, of course, to adjust the color of it at the end. But first, I want to blend it so it blends smoothly on top of the background. There we go. We have to fix it a little bit around the legs of the people. So with the legs, I will set my eraser to a pretty small size. This seems good. Zoom in a little bit. And I will just delete the parts around the leg. So there we go. It's good enough. And you can see how it helps that I have the opacity lowered. Um, so I only I can see what's behind and I only delete what needs to be deleted and not too much from the rest. And you can see that there is a little bit of a border, but it doesn't matter too much because we are going to change the color so it's adapted to the background. So now you can see it looks already pretty good, but it has the wrong color. Let's remove our guidelines so we have a clear view. And now what we're going to do is with the brick layer selected, click down here on adjustments and select color balance. And if it's like this um, below or above, above the brick layer, just pull it onto the brick layer so it's inside here. So it's just um, affecting the brick layer. And now we're going to just move these around until we find a value that's pretty much close to the background. You can see here blending pretty nicely. Let's see. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but kind of try to get to the right um, position. This looks pretty good to my eye. Maybe you have a better view or a different screen where you see a little bit differently. But for me, it looks pretty good. And if you don't look too if you don't look too closely, it kind of you won't even see that there is something that shouldn't be there in the first place. So that's kind of a nice trick to even that out and get rid of that void. And this basically was a tutorial on how to create a tiny world, one of these tiny planets. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, I'm creating a new video every three days. So maybe subscribe to my channel. And if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon, which is linked in the video description, where you get the original file with all the layers. You can chat with me and you can send me files for feedback. So it's really huge benefit. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.